So, last time we ended in Chaitanya Charitamrita Anjalila cap, uh, chapter 20, and we ended text 39. We are still reading Shiksh Ashtakam, the eight verses which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left for us. The eight verses actually Radharani is glorifying the holy name of Krishna in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So you are all invited to share your feelings and uh, thoughts in the connection with this theme we are reading. Please never be shy. Just interrupt and share your feelings and thoughts. Otherwise, I will just go on reading the verses. So we stopped at text number 39. I will read this text again because it's actually one of the eight verses. It's the verse number seven of the Shikshashtakam. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, My Lord Govinda, because of separation from you, I consider even a moment a great millennium. Tears flow from my eyes like torrents of rain and I see the entire world as void. So text 40. In my agitation, a day never ends, for every moment seems like a millennium, pouring incessant tears, my eyes are like clouds in the rainy season. Govinda virahe shunya haile tribhuvane tribhuvana tu shanale pote yena nahai jivana. The three worlds have become void because of separation from Govinda. I feel as if I were burning alive in a slow fire. So last time we spoke already about this mood that actually Radharani is here opening her feelings and she's glorifying the name of her beloved. At the same time, she's showing us her feelings of Viraha towards Krishna. And the whole scene is actually coming to an end. Chaitanya Charit Amrita will also end. So, actually, this is the mood that 
Krishna is gone and Radharani is in her mood of Viraha. So we can adopt these feelings because as Manjaris we are with her and we have the we may have some similar feelings towards her when we are here because we also miss her and without her we also may feel like we burn in a slow fire in our case it may be the fire of the material world here but we are burning here because all what our heart is searching for is the greatest love and this is Radharani herself so we may feel this connection and we may see also from this angle what are her feelings towards her, belo her beloved and what are our feelings towards her so that we may get some glimpse of course this is only possible in a spiritual body and not in the material mind so we have to see it from the angle of a mandri so radharani is going further krishna udasina haile karite parikshana sakhi sabe kahe krishna kara upekshana lord krishna has become indifferent to me just to test my love and my friends say better to disregard him Text 43. While Srimati Radharani was thinking in this way, the characteristics of natural love became manifest because of her pure heart. Now we hear what are these characteristics. Yishya ukanta dhainya praudi vinaya eta bhava ekatani karila udaya. The ecstatic symptoms of envy, great eagerness, humility, seal, and supplication all became manifest at once. Sometimes we think that from our view envy is a bad feeling actually. But when Krishna is decorating Radharani's feet, he is writing down his name once on the foot soles of Radha and he is writing Sham. And then he gets envy on his own name. He's seeing his name on the foot soles of Radharani and he thinks, Oh my God, I'm so bereft of all good luck. Even my name can st because my name can always stay 
There was some instability. I don't know if you heard everything. So, but Krishna said, even my name is in a better condition than I. My name can stick to Radharani's lotus feet all the time. So this kind of envy, it's out of love. Like the gopis were envy about the flute of Krishna. You know these stories. So this is meant here. And of course, out of love, great eagerness is arising. And humility. Because actually we may miss something, whatever it is, we may miss it very much. But we may not be humble when we miss something. We may even be proud. And we may think, yes, we will get it back. But actually, how you can get love of someone? You have to be humble. And that's why it is the nature of love that humility is arising. A natural loving humility to become this love more and more. So we see that all these things which are written here are actually coming out of love and it's natural. So we may pray for that, that our love becomes that great, that also this Symptoms are arising in our heart towards to Radharani. Text, text number forty-five. Itta bahvera tara mana astira haile soki gana ake prauti shloka ye padila. In that mood. The mind of Srimati Radharani was agitated and therefore she spoke a verse of advanced devotion to her gopi friends. So now we heard what kind of mood she has in her mind. And in this mood, very agitated. She is speaking now the following shloka. Hmm. One more description before the shloka comes. In the same spirit of ecstasy, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recited that verse and as soon as he did so, he felt like Srimati Radharani. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Mahaprabhu, the great Prabhu of Chaitanya, of consciousness. He is showing us also, how to do it, how to actually act in consciousness. So, as we can hear here, he is reciting that verse, and as soon he did so, he felt like Srimati Radharani. So, he's also giving us an example how to do it to go in the mood, to, to try to dive in the mood. And if we cannot, <laughs> then we have to really pray for it again and again, that one day when we read these verses, we can dive into these feelings, step by step, deeper and deeper. 
So now comes the last verse of the Shikshashtakam, the eighth verse. Let Krishna tightly embrace this maidservant who has fallen at his lotus feet. Let him tremble me or break my heart by never being visible to me. <clears throat> he is a debauchee after all and can do whatever he likes, but he is still no one other than the worshipable Lord of my heart. <laughs> So this is actually a final verse. So it may be very important. Let Krishna tightly embrace this maidservant who has fallen at his lotus feet. Radharani is praying in love. She wants to serve him. She has no other existence. So what about us? Do we want to have another existence than to serve Radha? Forget about the false ego. This is now a conscious decision. Do we want to have another existence? If we decide again and again every day, no. I actually don't want another existence outside of maidservant of Radharani. So we may follow her path as good as we can now and better and better in the future. <laughs> Let Krishna tightly embrace this maidservant who has fallen at his lotus feet. Let Radharani tightly embrace this maidservant who has fallen to her lotus feet. This could be our prayer. Why am I saying like this? Because Radharani is the highest devotee. She is showing us the way. And the final verse is showing us never give up. Never. If you love, never give up. Go on. Whatever happens, whatever may be on the way, like she is saying, he may tremble me or break my heart. I don't care. He is a debauchee, I know. But anyway, he will always be my worshipable Lord of my heart. So let us be the follower of this mood of Radharani. Because if we never give up, it's for sure that we will reach our goal. That's why this verse is so important. Whatever may happen, if we don't give up, we will reach our goal. That's the point. And we have to really consider this every moment, again and again. Because the mind, as long as it is involved in this material world, it will work on that point that you give up all other ideas then to make him great. <coughs> Let the false ego be great when you are in material existence. Let my seva always be there, whatever happens. Let my attitude to serve Rata be the greatest, whatever happens. 
And if we go on and on and on and on, the unconsciousness will make some good thing, actually. Some pattern will be there. Pattern means it goes automatically. And we will go automatically again and again in this mood. And this is a good pattern. And we need these good patterns to serve. And of course, the best is very conscious. So, I feel, it's just my feeling, you don't have to be d'accord, but please tell me what you feel. But my feeling is that it's a very important verse, actually. So let Krishna do whatever he wants. I will be the servant of him. A maid servant. This is the show. This is Radharani showing us. So may happen whatever may happen. We will stay at the side of Radha. In the case of Radharani, she knows that Krishna is a debauchee. <coughs> we also know there are different sides to see that, actually. When we know what is the law of exchange between Radharani and Krishna, then we understand what she means. But she is giving us a very nice example here, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jai Shri Radhe. Ami Krishna Pada Dasi. Tenorasa sukarasi, alingia rakare atma sata, kipana dea darashana, jarena mora tanumana, taputeno mora brahmanat. I am a maid servant of the lotus feet of Krishna. He is the embodiment of transcendental happiness and mellows. If he likes, he can tightly embrace me and make me feel oneness with him. Or, by not giving me his audience, he may corrode my mind and body. Nevertheless, it is he who is the Lord of my life. So let us see this maybe again. I am a maid servant of the lotus feet of Radha. She is the embodiment of transcendental love, of the highest love possible, Mahabhav, all transcendental feelings. If she likes, she can tightly embrace me and make me feel oneness with her, or by not giving her audience to me, she may corrode my mind and body. Nevertheless, <clears throat> she is always the queen of my life. Yes, I hear you. Uh, can I share a little bit? Please. So, <clears throat> uh, this Shikshashtaka, <clears throat> this last verse, this is uh, radical, what do you say, analysis 
for everybody. My Ishtadeva is Krishna. So our Manjari is, we say, we will say, our Ishtadev, Ishtadevi Srimate Radhara. Today, Guru Dev's morning lecture, he kindly showed us. He explained the difference of uh, a vegetarian. Hmm? Vegetarian. A vegan. 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 Yeah, vegan bhakta and devotion difference. So vegan, vegan people are thinking, I like this one, therefore I, I will eat because of I like it. But devotee say, I eat because he likes this. Vegan people say, I will do because I like it. But the devotees say, we will do, I will do because my Ishtadeva like it. My Ishtadeva will please. Therefore, we do. So Guru Dev explained very nicely what is a devotion. <coughs> this Radharani said, I don't care my pleasure. If Krishna pleased, but I'm so much suffering, that suffering is my highest pleasure. That is mood is Radharani. But uh, we are new fight devotee, we thinking, oh, if I do this seva, I'm suffering. Why Guru Dev give me this suffering? Sometimes we may say, think like this. Oh, this too much troublesome, so therefore I don't do this. But Radharani, his mood is not like this. He can do whatever he likes. He want to tightly embrace me. Okay, if he does not give me his audience, it's okay. Or he break my heart, that's also okay. So this is just, I want to say, like a vegan type of devotee. Means <coughs> uh, some devotee, like me, like hankering my pleasure. But uh, the other devotee is say, I'll do because my Ishtadeva like it. My Ishtadeva will please, therefore I'm doing. So this is Shikshashtaka. So again, if we did, oh my God, this is Radharani's greatness and so much love for Krishna. And we may understand Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you very much. <clears throat> yes, it's it's true that this is actually a very high stage because after all, Radharani is talking here. <laughs> it's the highest stage, actually. So, like I said, if we are not there, we may pray that step by step we come there. So you are giving a very nice example of, uh, like the example of Guru Dev is always giving with vegan. If somebody is cooking vegan because his body will be more healthy, he thinks like that. But Krishna likes milk, and after all, Krishna is the beloved of Radha, and I, I try to help her in the kitchen to cook for him. I cannot stay vegan. How? It's not possible. I will serve Rata and she's cooking for him. Of course, she will cook what he likes. It's just 
natural to follow. But what in the beginning stage? Do I have to change now 180 to come to this? Is it possible? Well, from my experience, usually it's not possible to change immediately. There has to be some steps. Maybe in the beginning, you cook a little bit also with milk. You don't have to eat it. You just cook it with Radharani for Krishna and ask him to also take the vegan, which you will eat the rest. Something like this. You may be practical in the beginning. And maybe in the beginning you do you, you only like some some service and you're not able to do another service because all of your inner voice is saying, no, I cannot. It's not possible. That's mm -hmm. okay. That's okay. I mean, really, it's okay. Radharani is accepting, accepting us like we are. She is saying, whoever has the wish, the thought to serve me is exactly like I want him to be. I don't know the exact words of the verse, but this is the sense of the words. So everyone who wants to serve her is already like she wants him to be. That means she is accepting wherever you are, as long as you have this wish. So we have to start from that point. We cannot go further artificially. It's not possible. Someone can pick you up there where you are and not where you are not. So Gurudev was telling me in the beginning that there's one thing he's asking me for myself. I should be honest, because then we can grow fast. If we pray to Radharani, I'm honest. I have this and this attachment. I'm not a great devotee. I'm just what I am, what I can do. I'm not proud about it, but that's it right now. So let us start from there. We have to be honest. And then we can go further very fast because Radharani will help us help us on the base of our honesty, actually. If I lie to myself, how she will help me? You're standing there. No, 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 no. I'm not standing there. I'm standing already there. <laughs> Doesn't work. Yes, I'm standing there. I'm not proud about it, <laughs> but that's like it is. Please, please help me to come up. And this actually also means humbleness. To see where I really are. So we are in this position. And nobody will judge who will do he is actually talking about himself. Ah, you are like this and that. No, no. He means, you know, when you make like this, three fingers are showing at yourself, right? Whoever is doing this is talking about himself. So no, no one will judge you. Brother Rani is taking you from there where you are. That's why honesty is really need it. It's the base. And then we can grow far, fast. And somebody who thinks he's more far, he will grow very slowly. Because he have to get the point that he's not there where he thought he is. Take time. I just wanted to, to, to share this because I know from my own path that the, the, more, the most fast 
development is then when I'm really honest. And sometimes this needs some help from outside also. Some person who is telling you honestly where he is seeing you standing because you're blind in this moment. So our, our beloved Gurudev can be from very, very great help also in that matter. Why you are vegan? Krishna likes to eat milk and products from milk. A vegan will not say, oh yes, Kurudi, you are right, immediately, maybe it takes some time. But the point is, help is always there. It's Radharani's help in different manners and we may accept it slowly or more fast. No one will judge. It is like it is, as long as we are honest and we want to go further, we will go further. And Radharani is actually opening her heart here completely. We have to see, this is actually very, very intimate what she is speaking here. Very intimate. And she is sharing this with us. So she is giving us a wonderful example also in that. Be honest. Open your heart. Share what are your feelings. Text number 49. Sakhi he shuna more manera nishaya. Kipa anuraga kare. Kipa dukka diya mare. Mora praneshwara krishna anyanaya. My dear friend, just hear the decision of my mind. You hear? My dear friend, just hear the decision of my mind. Krishna is the Lord of my life in all conditions. Whether he shows me affection or kills me by giving me unhappiness, So that's her position. For me, honestly, it's not possible to say like this. Whatever you want to do, just do it. Yeah, I can say now, but then tomorrow the test will come. And then I will pray like, why is this happening to me? Such hard times. Why? I cannot go on like this. Don't you love me? <laughs> Sometimes we are like uh, two persons in one, huh? One day praying, oh yes, please, please, I want to come more near, very fast. Then the test will come, the answer is there. Next day, immediately something is happening, life is changing. And then we are standing there at the same place in front of our deity and saying, why is this happening? What I have done? But sometimes there's a need of changing our vision, changing our life. And sometimes that's looking traumatic. 
So at least we can pray that we will come to the point that we can accept more and more the changes which are needed in our life to come closer, to be more purified. And they are maybe sometimes not easy, very big tests. My dear friend, just hear the decision of my mind. Krishna is the Lord of my life in all conditions. In all conditions. Whether he shows me affection or kills me by giving me unhappiness. So that's a very high stage of love. But Radharani is showing us. And this is the eighth verse of Shikshashtakam, or let's say this is a further explanation of the eighth verse. So actually it's a very high standard because it ends usually with the highest standard. So it should be our goal to come there, but we cannot come there artificially. We cannot say, yes, yes, we are there, and then we will break down and lose all of our inspiration and not go further. I saw this in many cases. More than 35 years I was observing myself and others on the way, and I saw that a lot of people left because they were not so honest if you cannot do something by the first time, try again. Every child is standing up again and again, falling down, standing up, falling down, standing up, falling down, standing up. But you cannot do this all the time if you gave everything in every time, because one time you break down without energy. So let yourself have the energy for that, actually. A child sits down sometimes after falling, getting new strength, and then try again. It's the way of love. We have to make the decision. No one can force us. But if we have a trainer, sometimes the trainer will force us to go over our borders. And usually that's not so easy. So Radharani is showing us the limit which we can reach the highest standard of love, actually, which means there is nothing further to come. Whatever you do to me, you are mine, and I will always stay with you as your maidservant. This is my decision. My dear friend, just hear the decision of my mind. Krishna is the Lord of my life in all conditions, whether he shows me affection or kills me by giving me unhappiness. Text 50 Sometimes Krishna gives up the company of other gopis and becomes controlled. Mind and body by me. 
And this actually is the good news. <laughs> if we love like that, if we come to that stage, then our beloved will be controlled by our love. Not that we want that. No, we just want to serve. But because of our love and, and servitude, the person we love will be controlled by that love. So sometimes Krishna gives up the company of other gopis and becomes controlled mind and body by me, by Radha. Thus he manifests my good fortune and gives others distress by performing his loving affairs with me. So now Radharani is in a good position. It's her good fortune. And the other gopis are in distress. So it may be like this or it may be like that. But you are always mine. That's pure love, no condition. Or since after all, he is a very cunning, obstinate debauchee with a propensity to cheat, a propensity to cheat, he takes to the company of other women. He then indulges in loving affairs with them in front of me to give distress to my mind. Nevertheless, he is still the Lord of my life. Who know, whoever know, uh, whoever don't know Brahma Samputa should read that to understand the love of Radharani. So Brahma Samputa is a very nice description to understand what's going on here. Otherwise, we may consider this to be material. So Brahma Samputa is explaining the love of Rata. Krishna himself is disguised as a heavenly girl, a girl from heavenly planets. And actually, he in the she form <laughs> is asking Radharani, why do you love this debauchee? How you can love him? How it's possible? And Radharani is giving the answer. It's not so easy to say in one sentence. That's why you should, if you didn't, read this book, Prema Samputta. So, but Radharani is giving us here a very nice description. Even if Krishna, in front of me, indulges loving affairs and gives distress to my mind, nevertheless, he is still the Lord of my life. So we make uh, meditate on this actually. Not so easy without reading Prema Samputa. We meditate on that. And then we may even get a connection to to us. What is our 
connection with Radha, how we could actually see this. We are always on her side, so we, we, we may understand her feelings. If we compare also our feelings to her, because actually Radharani loves everyone, so maybe sometimes you have some other devotees besides you, and you think, oh, they get more love from Radharani than me now. This may be from material point of view. But actually, it's not true. But even if it seems so, someone who really understands what love is and what is loving exchange on the pure level, he will be not distressed in any way. Because he can see it from the real point of view. Radharani is loving every living entity. Krishna is also loving every living entity. And how they are managing this with their pure love, we can understand through reading Prema Samputta. Not only by reading, we have to feel it. And we can feel it if we understand it from our Sita Deya. After all, this is the body of spiritual feeling. So if we get it once, then we understand what is actually this mood, this deep mood of love, which is actually described here. Because it's the wonderful, highest loving mood. Because I know from practice, <laughs> a person who is in my material life, near to me, once came, I don't understand this, why Radharani is loving this guy, this Krishna. <laughs> and she was very upset. But she was in material feelings. She herself is actually very jealous on the material platform. And she was also with this feeling, she came to me. I don't understand. I don't want to have to do with this Krishna. He is not a good man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you see it from a material point of view, yes. <laughs> so try to understand and please let help me to understand this pure, selfless love. Because then there's no misunderstanding and no false interpretation. And then we can accept more distress on the material platform because we see actually this is also a kind of love. Not always easy. So Radharani is going on, text 52. I do not mind my personal distress. I only wish for the happiness of Krishna. For his happiness is the goal of my life.
I do not mind my personal distress. I only wish for the happiness of Krishna, for his happiness is the goal of my life. However, if he feels great happiness in giving me distress, that distress is the best of my happiness. So if we understand this, even if it is our distress, but Radharani is happy, then this is our happiness. If we understand that, then we are coming to a very pure level of service. I'm not there. Maybe you can pray for me <laughs> that one day it will happen, but actually it's a nice goal. And Radharani is giving us this goal. This is her level of love. So if we want to serve her, we have to understand what is her level of love. And we may want to come to that level. There is a purport by Srila Prabhupada. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur says that the devotee does not care about his own happiness and distress. He is simply interested in seeing that Krishna is happy. And for that purpose, he engages in various activities. A pure devotee has no way of sensing happiness except by seeing that Krishna is happy in every respect. If Krishna becomes happy by giving him distress, such a devotee accepts that unhappiness as the greatest of all happiness. There is even an example of in Chaitanya Chaud Amrita when Nitai is kicking, I think it was Advaita Acharya, if I remember right. If not, please correct me. But he was kicking a person who, ha who was actually, uh, he had to take care of the of the devotee's happiness. And there was no room for Nittai, something like this, I remember. And then he was kicked. And this person, he was not sad, he was not crying, he was not lamenting. Oh, Nittai kicked me. He was happy. He was holding up his hand and saying, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, it happened. He really loves me because he kicked me. Otherwise, if you don't care for a person, why you should give him a kick? Which means correct him. Why you should correct a person which you don't care for? If you don't care, you don't care. This is the worst thing what actually can happen. But if somebody tries to correct you, that means he loves you. He's taking care in some way, isn't it? From the point of love, from the point of view of love, it is like that. The other point of view, we are, we are actually very used to then. <laughs> that some people actually just want to exploit your love. That's the other side. But actually, from the point of pure love, it 
somebody who cares, correcting you, that's even more love than not taking care of you. That's why it's the greatest of all happiness. That means you are accepted. Those who are materialistic, however, who are very proud of material wealth and have no spiritual knowledge, like the Prakrita Sahajyas, regard their own happiness as the aim of life. Some of them aspire to enjoy themselves by sharing the happiness of Krishna. This is the mentally of fruitive workers, the mentality of fruitive workers who want to enjoy sense gratification by making a show of service to Krishna. So if you really want to serve Krishna, really want to make him happy, there's no way around Radha. Only she knows how to do that. And she has this pure love we may aspire for. She has it already in the highest form. So if we want to learn that The feet of Rata are the best way to come to that point one day. We may take shelter. So Radharani is going further. <laughs> it's getting hard. If Krishna attracted by the beauty of some other woman wants to enjoy with her, but is unhappy because he cannot get her, I fall down at her feet, catch her hand, and bring her to Krishna to engage her for his happiness. That's something, huh? If Krishna, attracted by the beauty of some other woman, wants to enjoy with her, but is unhappy because he cannot get her, I fall down at her feet, catch her hand, and bring her to Krishna to engage her for his happiness. <clears throat> So now all material concepts are gone. When a beloved gopi shows symptoms of anger toward Krishna, Krishna is very satisfied. Indeed, he is pleased when chastised by such a gopi. She shows her bright suitably and Krishna enjoys that attitude. Then she gives up her bright with a little endeavor. Why does a woman continue to live? Who knows that Krishna's heart is unhappy, but who still shows her deep anger toward him? She is interested in her own happiness. I condemn such a woman to be struck on the head with a thunderbolt. For we simply want the happiness of Krishna.
So these verses underline again and again how selfless Radharani's love is, how selfless the gopis love Krishna. It's selfless completely. And here's another small purport from Srila Prabhupada. A devotee who is satisfied only with his own sense gratification certainly falls down from the service of Krishna. Being attracted by material happiness, he later joins the Prakrita Sahajas who are considered to be non-devotees. So Radharani is declaring he nicely that even if a gopi shows anger toward Krishna, it's just because to make him enjoy more in a suitable way. If it's not needed anymore, she gives up her anger immediately. Otherwise, she would actually enjoy herself, her feelings like anger. There was a question. So again, the last sentence of the purport was being attracted by material happiness. He later joins the Prakrita Sahajas, who are considered to be non-devotees. The Prakrita Sahajas are playing a show of love to God. We heard already. If I may ask, so who joined? Who was that? A devotee who is satisfied only with his own sense gratification. Oh, anyone, okay. Yeah. So a person may who I wants... ask, like, yes, please. Sometimes a criticism that the, the those brahmanas or or the high regulated people then turn out a little bit impersonal so maybe this path following this path of feeling not not in a false way but somehow would be also advisable <laughs> I didn't get this actually the the last I couldn't well in comparison it. for example now we say the Buddhists they're so uh, like uh, like Mayavadis or something like that. But if you meet them in real per person to person, then they would feel like be much more friendly and outgoing. So in a way, we, we shouldn't like lock ourselves out from this completely, you know? Aha, I understand. Yes. I also meet person. I met persons in my life who had an uh, impersonal um, attitude towards God, but actually they were very personal to me and to other usual uh, human beings like this. So I was wondering, but this just means that actually they are not really uh, convinced of the path. They are just there because they had some bad experience personally with love. And that's why they don't want to accept that God is, is a person, because they were hurt to their love investments in religious ways. I hope 
this could be understood. Um, because if you actually have bad experience with people, you also transfer this actually to God. Like, if we have a small children experience with our father and mother, the unconsciousness, not conscious, unconscious, we compare this to the relationship to God also. And, of course, we have some bad experience from religion because they actually abused our love we invested towards God. So it's natural that these people are not going further on that personal way, but try to go around. And then usually they are going in such a uh, surrounding people who are not, who don't have this personal relationship actually. Doesn't mean that they are completely convinced of this path that God has to be unpersonal. Usually if we talk with them, after some time comes out that actually they are not atheists or they are not really believing that there is no God. They just were hurt actually on this path. So it's true, we should not put out any person actually. Because every person is inside of love of Radharani. Always. There's always a door for everyone to step in again. I hope this helped a or made it a little bit more clear or something like this. So, text number 56. If a gopi envious of me, if a gopi envious of me satisfies Krishna and Krishna desires her, I shall not hesitate to go to her house and become her maidservant. For then my happiness will be awakened. This is also a very, a very wonderful help for us. Gurudev is always saying first we have to come to the level of Gopi Bhav. Gopi Bhav means actually we want to serve selfless. We want to serve without interest of ourself. So Radharani is giving this example because we could be also jealous about her. She's the best Gopi. But she herself is always prepared to serve any person who is giving the greatest enjoyment to Krishna. That's why she is in this position. So if we want to come there, best to follow her. Then we, were, well, then we are with her. And we can learn from her. And we can get Mahabhav from her. So it goes in two directions. If a gopi envious of me satisfies Krishna and Krishna desires her, I shall not hesitate to go to her house and become her maidservant. For then my happiness will be awakened. 
So that's what Radharani, what is Radharani making happy if Krishna is happy and nothing else. That's the point. And there's a story who is making this very clear. The wife of a Brahmana suffering from leprosy manifested herself as the topmost of all chaste women by serving a prostitute to satisfy her husband. She thus stopped the movement of the sun brought her dead husband back to life and satisfied the three principal demigods, Brahma, Vishnu and Maheshwara. In the purport, it's written, the Aditya Purana Makandeya Purana and Padma Purana tell about a Brahmana who was suffering from leprosy but had a very chaste and faithful wife. He desired to enjoy the company of a prostitute and therefore his wife went to her and became her maidservant just to draw her attention for his service. When the prostitute agreed to associate with him, the wife brought her the leprotic husp to, to the leprotic husband. When that leper, the sinful son of a Brahmana, saw the chastity of his wife, he finally abandoned his sinful intentions. While coming home, however, he touched the body of Markandeya Rishi, who thus cursed him to die at sunrise. Because of her chastity, the woman was very powerful. Therefore, when she heard about the curse, she vowed to stop the sunrise. Because of her strong determination to serve her husband, the three deities, namely Brahma, Vishnu and Maheshwara, were very happy and they gave her the benediction that her husband would be cured and brought back to life. This example is given herein to emphasize that a devotee should engage himself exclusively for the satisfaction of Radha. He is written Krishna, but we know that in our case it's Radha, without personal motives. That will make his life successful. So this is actually what we do. We serve the beloved of Krishna to make Krishna happy. We serve Radha. We want that she is happy. That's our happiness. And she wants that he is happy. That's her happiness. So we serve her happiness. Text 58 Krishna is my life and soul. Krishna is the treasure of my life. Indeed, Krishna is the very life of my life. I therefore keep him always in my heart and try to please him by rendering service. That is my constant meditation.
So again and again, whatever Radharani is saying here, we can learn from her, how we can see that Rata is my life and soul. Rata is the treasure of my life. Indeed, Rata is the very life of my life. I therefore keep her always in my heart and try to please her by rendering service. This is my constant meditation. Like Jayananda said, Radharani's Ishtadev is Krishna, our Ishtadevi is Radha. So we may follow in these steps. This is my constant meditation. What does it mean, constant meditation? Our mind is so unsteady. But constantly we try to get him back. Okay, now. You're hungry, okay, then cook with Radha for Krishna and eat the rest which is left over, the prasad. Whatever we want to do, we can get a connection with the Seva for Radharani, because Radharani is love, love is everywhere. We can always find the connection. Really, always. And this is our constant meditation. Constant. Sometimes works better, sometimes maybe not so good. But again and again we try. We try to fix our mind like a laser pointer on one point. Again and again and again like the captain who is sitting in the plane, is always again and again correcting the course. Correcting again and again. And then aeroplane is landing in Delhi. And we can take the taxi to Vrindavan. My happiness is the service of Krishna, and Krishna's happiness is in union, union with me. For this reason I give my body in charity to the lotus feet of Krishna, who accepts me as his loved one and calls me his most beloved. It is then that I consider myself his maidservant. My happiness is in the service of Krishna and Krishna's happiness is in the, new, in the union with me. So Radha's happiness is also in our service. Why? Because we will help her in her service and in a union with her beloved. For this reason I give my body in charity to the lotus feet of Krishna. So Radharani is giving herself. And Krishna accepts. Why he is accepting? Because he knows that Arani will never do anything out of the highest possible loving service in love to me. That's it. 
So Krishna can be sure whatever Radharani is doing is for his pleasure, for his good. If we understand that Radharani will never do anything which is not good for us, if we offer ourselves to her service, then we can also give ourselves in charity. So Radharani's life and soul is to serve her beloved. And that's why he is calling her his most beloved. So Radharani then considers herself as a maidservant. Another hint for us. Another hint. We can follow her as good as possible. Now, tomorrow may be better. Maybe tomorrow better. Again and again and again. If this stays our meditation, we are staying on the path. And with the help of Radharani and her maidservants, who are already there, like Guru Manjari, like Rupa Manjari, like Rati Manjari, we will get help on this path. Service to my lover is the home of happiness and is more sweet than direct union with him. Wow! Consider this stage of bhakti. Service to my lover is the home of happiness and is more sweet than direct union with him. We always think union, union, union with our beloved. But Radharani considers happiness of him is more sweet than direct union. So let me serve him under any circumstances, whatever it means to me, my happiness is only in his happiness. The goddess of fortune is evidence of this, for although she constantly lives on the heart of Narayan, she wants to render service to his lotus feet. She therefore considers herself a maidservant and serves him constantly. And this is love in action. If I am with my beloved, I could say, yes, let's enjoy our union. But more high is, I want to serve the happiness of my beloved, always. That's what I'm living for. So it's a wonderful gift by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he is opening the deep thoughts of bhakti from Radharani towards Krishna to us. This is the greatest gift ever given. And he is giving us Sadhu Yoga. Sadhu means the stage when adolescent is just in the stage of ripeness to enjoy with the lover in union. 
and we know what means yoga. So this kind of yoga is the highest yoga. And this is what we get as present here. Ujjvalaras unnat Ujjvalaras. These statements by Srimati Radharani show the symptoms of pure love for Krishna, tasted by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In that ecstatic love, his mind was unsteady. Transformations of transcendental love spread throughout his entire body and he could not sustain his body and mind. <laughs> Text 62 The pure devotional service in Vrindavan is like the golden particles in the river Chambu. In Vrindavan, there is not a trace of personal sense gratification. It is to advertise such pure love in this material world that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has written the previous verse and explained its meaning. Sixty-three. Thus overwhelmed by ecstatic love, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spoke like a madman and recited suitable verses. This is Shikshashtakam. We always talk about Shikshashtakam. But actually, it needs to really dive in. These are the feelings of Radharani. Her purest love is actually exhibited here by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And by diving in and reading it, we may get a little drop And this little drop can already cleanse our heart. And by again and again going in deep, our heart becomes more cleansed and more, and we can dive deeper. Text number 64. Purve Ashta Shloka Kari Loka Shiksha Dila Se Ashta Shlokera Arta Apane Ashwa Dila. The Lord had performed, uh, had formally composed these eight verses to teach people in general. Now he personally tasted the meaning of the verses, which are called the Sikshashtakam. The Lord had formally composed these eight verses to teach people in general. Now he personally tasted the meaning of these verses, which are called the Shikshashtaka. Shiksha Ashtaka. This is what he left. If we think about what usually holy people what to speak of an avatar of mercy, 
of the highest mercy. What usually persons left when they went, I mean, even uh, holy persons would leave some books behind or some big advice. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu just left eight verses. His shiksha is just eight verses. Astakam. And they are all speaking about the love for the name of Krishna. And they are actually telling the pureness of the love from Radha towards Krishna. That's why they are the most valuable gems, actually. <clears throat> In these verses, the love of Radharani is very, very clear. And also, the way is given how to follow, how to meditate, if we dive in. From the point of view of our real position, and our real position is in the Siddhadeya in the emotional, transcendental body. Transcendental emotion, not material. And then we can understand. Understand by feelings. Because understand by the mind, not possible. That's material. Understand by feelings. The mind is serving the feelings of the heart, of the transcendental body. Then we may understand. So wonderful. And even more wonderful. Text 65. Prabhura Shikshashtaka Shloka Ye Bhade Shune Krishna Prema Bhakti Tara Bhade Dine Dine. If anyone recites or hears these eight verses of instructions by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, His ecstatic love and devotion for Krishna increase day by day. Who is giving this blessing? We have to consider this is the truth. This is not just a say, you know. Yeah. <laughs> If you do this, you get, no, no, this is really, this is the great mercy here written down. If anyone recites or hears these eight verses of instructions by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his ecstatic love and devotion for Krishna increase day by day. And here Krishna means, of course, also Radha. Our devotion for Radha increased day by day because it's spoken by her. So this is a blessing, huh? We got it. We were reading and hearing. So again and again we can do this. And we have this blessing that our ecstatic love and devotion Increase day by day. Jai Shri Rate. This is her love. <clears throat> oh. 
Although Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is deep, as deep as a grave, as millions of oceans, although Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is as deep and grave as millions of oceans, when the moon of his various emotions rises, he becomes restless. When Sri Chaitanya, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu read the verses of Jayadev's Gita Govinda of Srimad Bhagavat, of Ramananda Roy's drama Jagannath Vallabha Nataka, and of Bilva Mangala Thakur's Krishna Kanamrita, he was overwhelmed by the various ecstatic emotions of those verses. Thus, he tasted their purports. For 12 years, Sri Chaitanya remained in that state day and night. With his two friends, he tasted the meaning of those verses, which consists of nothing but the transcendental bliss and mellows of Krishna consciousness. Even Anantadev, who has thousands of faces, could not reach the end of describing the transcendental bliss of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. How then could an ordinary living being with very little intelligence describe such pastimes? Nevertheless, I am trying to touch but a particle of them just to rectify my own self. So Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is writing here about himself. And it's also very interesting how he could write. He was actually describing before that he's almost blind and his hands are shivering. And actually he was writing it by hand. Not like today, computer. <laughs> by hand. And he was always almost blind, very old. Every day he could die, he's describing it before. But he himself is describing now how it's possible. There is no limit to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's activities and his words of madness. Therefore, describing them all would greatly increase the size of this book. Whatever pastimes Srila Vrindavandas Thakur has first described, I have merrily summarized. I have only very briefly described the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not described by Vrindavandas Thakur. Nevertheless, because those transcendental pastimes are so numerous, the size of this book has increased. It is impossible to describe all the pastimes elaborately. I shall therefore end this description and offer them my respectful obeisances. What I have described gives merely an indication but by following this indication, one may obtain a taste of all the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I cannot understand the very deep, meaningful pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. My intelligence cannot penetrate them.
and therefore I could not properly describe them. After offering my respectful obeisances to the lotus feet of all my Vaishnava readers, I shall therefore end this description of the characteristics of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The sky is unlimited, but many birds fly higher and higher according to their own abilities. So, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is ending here and he is actually then uh, describing again what was actually in the whole Anjalila from beginning to end. But we are running out of time, so I will end here. Maybe there are some questions or comments or corrections or something like this. Please share. Oh, may I ask? The sentiment of Radhika that she will like give her life to Krishna. Mm, how can we like understand this in in um, like as a manja? You, you probably wouldn't want that to happen, or of course you want to arrange a meeting. But if like this is not in a um, like in a desperate mood, as it was described, right? So how to think about that? It's a vihara, a vi viraha mood. So viraha mood means they are not together, but actually it is also described that Radharani, it was actually here in one verse, is more fixed on the happiness of Krishna than of the being together with him directly and enjoy with him directly. So whatever is his happiness, it's her happiness. So why she was here actually, why she was invited to take part in the Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Lila, we know that actually it was Krishna's will. He wanted to enjoy her mood of love. He wanted to understand actually her love, her deepness. And he also wanted to understand the taste of Manjari bath, actually. He wanted to experience it. And still he wants to experience, because this Lila is going on all the time. It's not a past Lila. It's going on all the time, again and again. So actually it's happiness. It's It seems like you know, if a lila is there, lila means play, a game. So if you're going on a stage and you play a game, you may look very sad, but inside you're very happy because it's your role also. And you may even not be conscious that it's your role. You even forget in that moment that this is actually your role, but you're very happy inside because you express this game, this play. So actually, we have to see it from a different view also, because if we see it from our material point of view, oh, she is very sad. This is not the truth, but still, even though Yoga Maya is actually going into the game and let them lose their consciousness, let them forget that they were just together and now they are in Viraha, they are completely desperate. Actually, this is the taste of the Lila. So it also has a very, very sweet taste. And this taste can be even more high than to be together with Krishna. And it it's makes him happy. In this, like aiding this Viraha, how to do that? 
Sorry, I didn't I, I didn't hear this correctly. How or what is our role to play in, in aiding this Miraha Lila? It's like this that we want to serve Radharani. If she is in Viraha, she can have actually enjoy even more service to Krishna because actually he is also in Viraha, right? Like on the moon tower, we had yesterday a very nice example. When Krishna comes back with his cowherd friends and is standing in front of the moon tower, Radharani actually the manjari is uh, giving her steadiness to go up to the moon tower. Although Radharani knows that she will serve Krishna, and this is actually her source of power to go up, but also the manjaris know that Radharani will serve her beloved there. And she forgets in this moment. So now the manjari is actually the remembrance of Radharani, she will serve him very nicely there. So they actually help her. First of all, they are talking about Krishna all the time when they go up and they help her, of course, right and left and do whatever is needed to bring her up to the tower and serve her in this way, give her hope, uh, put away her, her, uh, disparity, her, uh, her suffering, take away from her and give her the hope. You will see him very soon. He will come, inspire her. Like this, this is the, the seva. Of course, I cannot tell in shortly everything, but some overview. And now she's coming up and she is actually offering Krishna her wonderful clans, and this clans, as is described, gives Krishna hold because he is actually also desperate, completely. He is missing her so much when he comes back with his friends. And some friends, they know how he feels and they actually push him also towards the tower. Go there, you will see her there. But this all happens secretly. But now Radharani is offering her clans and her sidelong clans is giving hold to Krishna. He is standing there and he has hold again because he was also almost completely desperate because he is missing her. So in this way, it's a, it's a wonderful exchange of love and all are involved. And the mandri especially is involved because Radharani forgets herself. She forgets completely. She is just completely missing him, wanting to serve him. And the mandris serve that move, taking her away this, whatever is giving suffering to her, they will take away and give her steadiness to come up to the tower. So it's just a little example. But there are so many occasions when they can serve her in this uh, state of mind. Did this answer your question somehow? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for this wonderful question. Actually, it's a very nice question. Because how can we serve her and how we can understand these prayers? Because she's suffering. How we can understand? Yes, we want to help her. And in this way, we can understand her feelings because Radharani is actually opening her heart here. And we may understand her mood better and then understand more how to serve her in the way that we follow her. First of all, there are different levels of understanding. So in this different kind of understandings, we can serve always in some way. And Radharani is giving us a hint here, not just one, so many hints. 
And this is actually why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the highest consciousness by the greatest Prabhu, is given. Unnatu Chvalarasa. But it has such a deepness, we have to start from somewhere. And Shikshashtakam is giving a very nice frame how we can go like her. Like I did in some verses, I just exchanged the word Krishna with Radha and it works very nicely and then we can understand actually the mood. Our mood is to serve our beloved because she is serving, she is serving Krishna. So we serve her in the same manner as we can. And this is the way of completely selfless love, actually. It's an overview. It's not so detailed, but a very nice overview, a wonderful overview. For eight verses, it's going so deep. Oh, my God. So thank you very much. We came to an end of uh, Shikshashtakam and uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. So I actually don't know if I have to go further or not, because this is actually, we, we went now just through to see where is actually the, the Manjari behalf visible. But actually, if we are diving in, in our bath, we can see that this bath is everywhere, because Radharani is everywhere, and we can serve Radharani everywhere, so we can find it everywhere. So, Gurudev have to, has to make a decision if and it should go on what we should do. I think our choice, Gorabaniji. Uh, can uh, hear? Yeah, he can hear. So I think you know our choice, which you know, which chapter or which book shall we read? I think, of course, Gurudev may suggest us, but uh, I think you know our our select our choice. Yes, thank you very much. I was I trying to. Krishna Chaitanya, sein Leben und seine Lehre. <laughs> German oh. or yeah, in English also. Yeah, there are quite more books about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah, let's see. I tried to hook Gurudev, but not possible. Anyway, by his mercy, this is possible, and uh, let's see if it go on and how it's going on So next Monday. Thank you very much for your for your uh, Gemeinschaft. I'm missing the word German word is Gemeinschaft association association, association. yes now. Sorry, sometimes. Ja, die Sang. Yes, Sangha also. Huh? Thank you very much. <laughs>